Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. There has been a lot of buzz lately about a recently released film by Netflix titled Leave the World Behind, based on a novel by the same name. The plot revolves around a catastrophic collapse in the US, triggered by a cyber attack and mass drone attack that shuts down the internet and disrupts the global economy, leading to questions of who might have been behind the sabotage. The most interesting aspect of the film is not so much the story, which is lackluster at best, but the fact that Barack Obama was so deeply involved in the making of the film, as executive producer and as advisor on the script. This has led many people to suggest the movie is actually predictive programming, propaganda designed to acclimate the masses to the idea of an event that is planned to happen in the near future. Similar concerns were raised back in 2021, when the World Economic Forum oversaw a war game called Cyberpolygon, an event meant to simulate a massive cyber attack on the vulnerable functions of the World Wide Web. The reason Cyberpolygon raised so many eyebrows was perfectly understandable. The WEF had also hosted another simulation at the end of 2019, called Event In other words, it was as if the globalists at the WEF knew that thing was about to strike. While Hollywood interpretations of cyber attacks are usually exaggerated in terms of the true effects, there is a very real and considerable threat associated with such a disaster. So-called experts in the tech field often dismiss the wider dangers to the internet itself, because they have been indoctrinated into believing that the design of the web has too many redundancies. In other words, they act as if it is invincible. This is not really the case. Though data loss can be prevented through cloud storage, the internet as a mechanism can still be shut down or taken down deliberately for long periods of time. In the past, I have written about a very interesting event that was barely covered by the corporate media, called the Fastly outage. In June of 2021, there was an internet outage that led to large swaths of the web going completely dark, including a number of mainstream news sites, Amazon, eBay, Twitch, Reddit, a host of government websites also went down. All this happened when content delivery network company, Fastly, experienced a bug. Although Amazon had its website back online within 20 minutes, the brief outage cost the company over $5.5 million in sales. A content delivery network is a geographically distributed network of proxy servers and their data centers. They make up the what is known as the backbone of the internet. Fastly identified and fixed the problem within two hours, and continues to claim the outage had nothing to do with a cyber attack. However, a huge vulnerability for the internet, a center of structural support Karl von Klausowitz, would have called a Schwerpunkt, was revealed to the public. A sizable portion of the web is dependent on only a handful of CDN companies, including Fastly. It is also through collusion with these companies that governments are able to implement an internet kill switch in the face of possible civil unrest. A cyber attack would simply remove the government as the arbiter, or act as a false flag scapegoat, so the government can avoid blame. But what would really happen if we lost the internet for a week, or a month, or a year? In the US, the result would be calamity, because our economy has become far too dependent on digitization. Around 10% of US GDP is directly tied to online commerce. This doesn't seem like much, but a loss of that GDP would send the US into immediate and steep recession. Around 17 million jobs in the US are generated by commercial internet enterprises, and around 38% of these workers are employed by small businesses. According to surveys, 70% of American workers say they cannot do their jobs effectively without internet access. 
Keep in mind, if the trend of work from home during the lockdowns had stuck, an even bigger piece of the economy would be dependent on the health of the web. The five industries considered most vulnerable to cyber attack are public administration, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, finance and insurance, education and retail. That is to say, these are the industries that are attacked most often. Attacks on vital utilities are usually the favorite set pieces for disasters portrayed in fiction and film, but these are actually far less worrisome. The real danger is, the potential for an attack on the internet as a system. All it would take is for a couple CDNs or more to be hit simultaneously to cause vast online blackouts. Most important of all are, the ways in which international banking and finance utilize online networks to maintain the flow money. Without the web, trade velocity dies immediately, and building it back from implosion, could take years. But, who would benefit from such an attack? Certainly, foreign powers might see the crippling of America's digital infrastructure as a way to severely damage the country without having to fight directly and militarily. However, there are also a number of benefits to the globalists. For example, one of the biggest obstacles for the elites during their attempt to institute the Great Reset was the proliferation of factual data that debunked the narrative. American conservatives represented a serious barrier to their success, with tens of millions of owning patriots refusing to comply. The harder they pushed, the greater the chance of an armed insurgency. Even though the establishment had every single big tech conglomerate on their side when it came to mass censorship of contrary information, they still failed to stop the spread of the truth. The elites did not have as much control over the web as they thought they did. In the event of a large-scale cyberattack, the internet could be shut down completely, leaving only corporate media sources to filter information and control the narrative. The alternative media would be silenced, and the public would be left in confusion, desperately searching for answers. Interestingly, this is a core theme of Obama's Leave the World Behind, the idea of a population utterly cut off from reliable information and scrambling to figure out who is attacking them. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The internet has become an integral pillar of Western economies, to the point that a majority of people would not know how to live without it should it disappear. This is the disturbing reality we face in the midst of a growing series of geopolitical conflicts and more oppressive governments. It would seem it's only a matter of time before there's a major disruption. The solution is pretty straightforward, localization of trade and production is the way to prevent full-spectrum collapse, and alternative communication networks such as ham radio networks can prevent information silence. There is no reason why Americans should have to become subservient to the whims of globalism, the interdependent supply chain or digitization. They can and should create their own backup plan. Getting people to realize this and implement basic local measures is where we run into difficulties. Sadly, a lot of first world citizens assume that the system will always be there for them when they need it and they don't actively seek out solutions until disaster is at their doorstep. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.